Hello everyone, Criticorn here. Today I want to talk about Star Citizen and the science career path. I knew nothing about this, and the more I dove into it, I found really cool and exciting information to share with you guys if you're new or not really sure what the science career path entails. What's particularly interesting about the science career path is that you have a wide variety of different modules to choose from. While one day you could use your space telescope to look into the deepest points of space making discoveries, the next day you could attach your biodomes, growing crops, and pursuing a career in the agricultural market. The developers are also still making lots of other modules, so the choices will be really interesting and exciting as you can mix and match them all together, tailored to your specific wants and needs. I do want to stress with my usual disclaimer that this info is already known to vets and that this career in particular is very much still in the development phase and forever changing until the game is released. So I will make an updated video once we have more concrete info. Now because I'm going to be talking about modules, I just really quickly want to brush over the ship, the Endeavor, which is the only ship currently that can have modules attached to it. Now even if the developers don't create a smaller ship that can have maybe one module attached to it, I don't want you to worry if you go Google how much that ship is. It's $350 and that could go up. I know your eyes will pop out of your head, but don't worry, I can put your mind at ease. From my best guess and estimations, with what the developers have said, the time it would take to earn a smaller ship, this ship should be easy to acquire within a one to two month period, and that's if no one's helping you out. So don't worry if the ship isn't something you can have immediately, it's something you can earn in-game fairly quickly. And just to clarify that modules is a loose term, and that there are other ships that can also have modules attached to them, but I'm going to be talking specifically about the science-dedicated ship and the science-dedicated modules that you can attach to that ship. Now, if you're a bit of an explorer and you like making discoveries, investing in a space telescope would certainly be a good idea. It's really exciting because when you point this telescope into the deepest points of space, you're going to come across really cool things like comets, black holes, derelict wrecks, asteroid fields that are full and rich in resources. Then you, all you have to do is sell that info to the appropriate buyer and make all of your money by sitting in the comfort of your ship. There's also two other added perks with this as well. You didn't have to spend any fuel, which can add up quickly if you don't make any discoveries, and you also didn't risk getting attacked by pirates should the area have been dangerous. Now when you're pointing your telescope deep into space, you need to use the magnifications to actually come across some of the discoveries. When you do, it will be all but confirmed at that point what it is you just discovered, and the computers will analyze the data for you to sell. It's going to take a lot of patience, too, along with some skill, knowing when to zoom in and when to zoom out, and having the patience to sit through and look at a lot of empty space. And one of the really cool elements that gets me just all the more excited to try out one of these telescopes is that when you're looking at all the different stars, you might see some of them flicker or be kind of blocked or obstructed by something. When you zoom in, it's an actual object that's causing the obstruction, and you made another discovery that way. It's a cool real-life element that just makes me all the more excited to serve on Endeavor crew and use that telescope. Now, one of the modules we have a lot of detail about is the organic module. This is where you're going to be growing crops inside a controlled environment and be able to deliver them without them rotting or deteriorating before they lose their value. You can take care and grow basic crops, which will make you some money, but with all the skill and knowledge that you collect, throughout your experience will come in handy is growing the very rare and exclusive crops that couldn't be grown on certain planets. Now when you plant your crops in your dome, you're going to be dealing with different elements that will make the plants grow and mature correctly. The amount of water that they're given, the temperature in the biodome, the quality of the soil and the fertilizer, and of course the levels of radiation that you're applying to them. Now it's said that the crops growing require 8 to 10 hours of attention before they fully mature and they're ready to harvest. You can log off in a safe area, but the plants won't mature any further, and you'll have to keep taking care of them once you log back in. If you do decide to stay out in open space and let them mature while you're offline, you risk being attacked by pirates, so it's not suggested. Of course, the big money to be had is going to come from the plants that aren't being grown by the AI and the other players. That's going to be the rare and exotic plants that are on the far edges of the galaxy and cost a lot of money to purchase, a lot of time to take care of, and a lot of trial and error on your part to figure out how, how to grow them correctly. You're going to lose some crops, and as long as you accept this as part of the job, it won't be as stressful as to someone like me who would probably end up pulling my hair out. Of course, that isn't the only element you'll have to worry about when raising your rare plants. They're also going to require special radiation from nebulas or stars. And when you go into those nebulas and stars, they also have their levels of danger. While the pirates are hanging out in the nebulas trying to hunt you down and find you, going near a star will literally fizzle away your shields and you're going to have to learn through trial and error the appropriate amount of time and distance you need to be near that star for your plants to mature. 
But what's really exciting about farming is that it was your knowledge, trial, and error, and not your checkbook that got you where you were today. You're going to be experimenting and through the trial and error, figuring out how to grow a really rare crop that nobody else knows how to do. And that's going to make you a real sought after commodity in the universe and a very lucrative one at that too. Of course, there's going to be a wide array and selection of other modules you can apply to your ship. For instance, the super collider, which can be used to modify parts on a ship and make them perform better than the stock version that another player might have. A lot of racing ships are definitely going to want to upgrade their thrusters, while combat ships are going to want to upgrade their weaponry. Another fun thing is going to be rescuing players using an ID beacon locator, where players are ejected from their ship or stranded in space and need to be picked up by your vessel. They'll leave a little message saying how much they're willing to pay for, and you'll decide if it's worth it, if it's a dangerous area or not, and if it covers the cost of the fuel and the effort that you'd have to put into saving them. It's going to be really funny to see what happens with that module, as I'm sure a lot of players are going to try and jack up prices, and other players are going to be so desperate they'll pay whatever they can to get out of that situation. There's going to be a lot of modules that help each other and increase the efficiency of one another when you add them together, but if you decide to mix and match, the developers have said you can go that route, but you won't be as efficient, and it's not really recommended. When you're using the telescope, there's going to be a computer module that analyzes all the data that you can add on as well. If you decide to add a biodome and grow some plants, neither are going to help each other and, it, and could end up hurting you in the end. I do want to make a note that I didn't forget all the medical modules that you can add onto the ships as well, but one of the lead developers, Ben, has said that it's no longer considered science and it's actually just going to be part of the medical field instead. This is very important and a very critical element of the game, but it's going to be its own separate career that you can pursue. And I just want to make a couple personal notes. Thank you so much, guys, for subscribing to my channel, writing in the comment section how much you're enjoying these videos. I can't begin to say thank you enough. I was doing it in the comment section, and then I felt like I was spamming you guys, so I didn't want to keep doing that. It seemed like it was uncool or something. So I'll just say it in this video. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm really happy you guys are enjoying these videos, and it's given me all that I need to keep making more for you. And as long as you enjoy them, I will always be making more of them. And that's going to bring me to my other thing. While I am going to run out of careers to talk about, because there's only maybe like three or four more that I haven't really covered, I'm going to start talking about maybe the ships and strategies involved in picking those ships, what you guys could do in that aspect. And I hope that's interesting. But if it's not, I hope you remember that once the game starts developing more, maybe in the later months in the year, I'll be able to make updated videos and get back into talking about all these different careers for you. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week. Have a great weekend and I will talk to you all later.